For many, many years now, every major door has offered the possibility to record and edit MIDI. In this video, I want to run you through what's actually going on when we work with MIDI inside of a door. For example, at the moment I'm recording information that I'm playing through a MIDI keyboard, but I'm not actually recording any sound. MIDI does not contain any sound. It's purely information. The information on the left hand side of this editor is how we used to actually edit MIDI. The moment you enter anything on a MIDI keyboard, it instantly sends a message saying what type of information has been sent, the start point, when it was pressed, when it was released, the length of the note, which note was actually played, in this case it's C1, and the velocity in terms of how hard the note was actually pressed. Now there's only 128 variables with MIDI. In this case, zero is the first integer, so it's between zero and 127. MIDI was invented in the early 80s so that this kind of information could be sent in between different manufacturers' keyboards. It was groundbreaking, but even today there's still some limitations. The good news is we've got different ways of being able to edit MIDI inside of doors. For example, if I double click on this event, I can see exactly what I've played. I can see it sequentially from start to finish and I can clearly see it sitting over the top of the grid. I can also see a piano scroll on the left hand side and I can click on that to see which notes are triggering what sounds. I can edit the information inside of the editor and I can also quantize it so I can move the playing in time. Handling and editing tools like the controller lane quickly give us control over things like velocity and pitch bend and aftertouch and a number of different types of information that can be sent via MIDI. Once again, it's important to stress that we're not changing any audio here. We're editing data that's been used to control a sound generating device or a software instrument, in this case, Groove Agent SE3. VST instruments use your computer's processing power to generate sounds. And everything that we do out here is being sent to this instrument. A lot of the parameters that we use to control and manipulate sound inside the instrument are also based on the same MIDI communication. There are so many different ways we can enter MIDI data into a computer. We can record it through a keyboard or we can grab a pencil and we can simply draw an event in down on the project window, go down to the editor in the lower zone and once again grab your pen and start drawing information in. And this is a far more accurate way of entering information, but it's probably the most boring way. So everyone's got a different way of actually using MIDI inside of a door. The good thing about MIDI information is it doesn't take up much memory. So MIDI patterns, loops, and data are everywhere inside of doors like Cubase, and it comes packed full of different MIDI presets. And we can instantly change these presets or drag and drop them over and use them straight away in our project. And then there's a number of different ways we can actually work with the information and edit it. For example, when it comes to drums, Cubase allows you to create a drum map from the instrument. The drum map is mapping out all the sounds that Groove Agent SE3 is generating and putting them into a drum map where we can use a drumstick editor to start editing the drums. Instruments like Hellion Sonic SE3 use MIDI to control arpeggiators. So you hold down one note and it generates a whole lot of other notes based on MIDI patterns. You can also edit and record automation on different parameters. So for instance, I'm using the automation features now to record my movements as I move through these parameters. Now I can go and show all the automation in my track and I can easily see and start to edit the control that I have over these different parameters. So all of these different types of visual representations are a fantastic way to get precise control over the sound that you're trying to generate. As I said earlier, MIDI doesn't take up much in terms of storage space. And through the media bay in Cubase, you can go and highlight or select all of the different types of MIDI patterns, banks, and loops. And you can use this MIDI content to generate musical ideas for your projects. It's a great way of getting yourself out of a creative block. And remember, at the end of the day, it's not sound. It's just basically information saying, I pressed this note, this is how hard I pressed it, and this is how long I pressed it for, and some other important controller information, like pitch band or sustain, for example. There's also loads of MIDI plugins. So for example, for programming drums, I could use something like Beat Designer. Beat Designer gives me the instruments on the left-hand side, and it also gives me a grid where I can start entering information. Now, Beat Designer needs an instrument like Groove Agent SE4 
to trigger the actual sounds. But it also comes with banks and banks of different types of drum loops, which I can just simply drag and drop straight over into my project. And immediately, I've got a drum track. Now that we've taken a look at some of the different editors inside of Cubase and how MIDI works, we can go back to the original list editor and you can see it's just information being passed from one device to the next. Thanks for taking the time to stop by. Please subscribe to the Cubase YouTube channel for plenty more videos like this. I'll catch you there.